So I have a little over, at that time, and have had for the last three years, a little over half the department, a little over 3,000 of the 6,000 employees were under my command. And for those of you who don't know, field operations is your patrol divisions. We have 15 patrol divisions in the city. Um, in addition to that, we have both Bush and Hobby and Ellington Air Force Base. Um, we have a role there. So the airports, I also had the traffic enforcement uh, division, which handles the whole city. And then I had the mental health division. So again, much of my role, my responsibility, was responding to you when you called for the help. When you called 911, when, you, when we had a problem in the community with, or in, on our roadways, uh, with any kind of road rage or anything like that, all of those things would fall into my command. Know this. I mean, I had three assistant chiefs, and I had 15 uh, commanders, and and all those officers. So it's not like I'm out there doing all those things. It's the men and women of the Houston Police Department that are all out there doing the best job they can, responding to those things. And and of course, and for me as a support, trying to help them accomplish those things. So that is kind of some of the things about me and what I've done in my career with the Houston Police Department. Um, and I'll take questions on that later for you if you have any questions in that regard or anything else. A little bit um, about uh, Chief Troy Fenner. Um, I, I do want to acknowledge his service here. Uh, he did 34 years. Um, Chief Fenner, Troy to me, uh, started the uh, department, started the police academy a full two months ahead of me or eight weeks. We were in the academy together and he also went out with us. So, um, he did do everything he could, I think, to help. So I really want to acknowledge that and thank him because he was the one that did promote me to executive assistant chief uh, in 21. The Houston Police Department's mission hasn't changed. Regardless of who's sitting at the, in the seat of the chief and making those decisions, our job is to protect the public. It's to be out there, to be available, to try to make a difference for those people who have no one else to look out for, who have no, uh, I mean, we have a lot in our community that live on the margins, live in areas that are, that have high crime and, and have no way of in making it better or moving or some of those types of things. And we're all they have. So my job, the mission of the Houston Police Department is to serve the public and protect everybody out there. If that hasn't changed, it did not change as of today. Uh, it's been the same for my entire career and before. Um, and I want to say that uh, I am honored to, to be in this role right now, however it occurred, because uh, I am so proud of the men and women that I get to work with every day. And, and it's them that keep us going, and I appreciate that. Uh, and it's you all as the public who support us because I have often bragged on camera to many of you uh, that I've been able, I've been fortunate to be able to travel not just the country but also the world and the support that we have here from the community I say is, is, is second to none and I really appreciate that and again I'm very proud of that. So before we go to questions um, I think it's important for us to acknowledge, acknowledge something. This, uh, I think it, this is Police Week, and uh, I did a, we did a uh, prayer this morning just outside our headquarters, and uh, and I really appreciate all the men of faith and women of faith that showed up for that, and all the other all the public and our officials that showed up for that. I want to take this chance again, this opportunity to recognize the service of so many and and most importantly the 121 men and women who have given their life for the city for their families who have lost uh, their members of their family dads moms brothers sisters sons daughters um, i cannot imagine what those families go through every day and it's my job to take care of them too and this is the week more than any other, because we're always honoring, but this is the week more than any other, that we want to remember them and, and recognize them and take care of them because they will always, always be HPD family. So that's important to me. So with that said, 
I think it's time that I'll go to questions. So to make this work best um, is probably go from left to right um, and maybe a couple of rounds of questions, if that's fair to everybody. That may You may want more, and we'll see how things go. Um, I do want to, I do think it's important again to emphasize um, and this is not an excuse but it is a fact that I took over last night at 10:30 um, and my role um, has been in the department um, and has been for some time but certainly in the last several months uh, still has been the field operations chief uh, to handle things that are in the fielding happening now, why, while my former boss, Chief Troy Fenner, and Executive Assistant Chief uh, Banten, and so many of my other colleagues have worked on these cases that I'm sure you're going to ask about, the SL issues that we're dealing with and all the other things. So my focus has been external, outward, responding to calls, doing the, handling the things that are happening right now. It's also been to manage some overtime funds that the, the, uh, the mayor and council um, front gave us for additional overtime because we are short. Um, that's been said ad nauseum, but we are short. And those overtime funds are helping us out in many ways to try to tamp down violent crime. We still have challenges. Not to mention our Southeast Texas Crime Reduction Initiative that we launched in January uh, under the direction of the mayor, and he gave that to me. Uh, where I have multiple agencies that we're meeting with every week, I mean, every month. And then, of course, we have operations that are occurring weekly to combat road rage, aggressive driving, to, to find and arrest those fugitives that are out there, especially the violent ones, and to attack areas and try to bring crime down in our hardest-hit neighborhoods and areas. So these are the, those are kind of the three pillars of that initiative. And I thank my colleagues across the region. Um, the, the, all the counties and all the municipal agencies and the state the DPS for helping us out in this regard. So I say all that to say my focus has been outward. Now that I am the acting chief of police and, and, and um, now responsible for all these other things, I am still getting caught up in a lot of things that were happening through that investigation. So please bear with me. Be patient. I'll answer what I can. And if I have to get back to you, I promise I will. So with that, let's go to questions. What I know, well, I mean, so we have the the the, the, the case that uh, we dis the discovery that uh, cases have been suspended. That's already been said, and it's heavily been written on in the news, and that's been the effort to go back. And, and try to go back through all of those cases and and try to reach some resolution, figure out what happened in those cases, each one, every, every single case, if possible. What happened? Uh, is there more that we can do with it? Uh, is there not more than we can do with it? And uh, it was possibly miscoded. There was a lot of cases miscoded, but I think it's very important to, um, to state that even with all of that, we still have real victims, okay? And so we need, the, and so for that, we need to do everything we can um, to, to help them, to try to bring resolution to as many as we can, and, and try to just own this and go forward. So that, uh, that is ongoing. The, the effort to get through the, I think the number has been 260,000, that's been quoted pretty often. It's taking time. Um, our focus primarily are on the issues that were, or the, the cases um, that were involved personal person violence. Um, and I think you all would agree that would be the most important ones to focus on first. And that's what we're trying to get through. And we hope, we're hopeful that in the very near future we'll have seen all those cases and, and worked on that and uh, made, a, uh, made an impact for those people who were, who were harmed in that. The property crime ones are a little bit, there's, there's also those. Those could take a little bit longer. Again, it's the, the sheer volume is going to mean a longer effort to try to take care and, and go through all of those cases and bring some type of resolution that's appropriate to them. Again, most importantly, for the persons who were harmed, 
Uh, and then for the public in general, knowing that their police department is working hard for them. And we're trying not to let anything get biased. So uh, did I answer your question? Okay. Say that again, please. So for me, that's a little bit harder question to answer. Um, I know that there's been much talk about 2021 and a meeting by at the command staff, executive staff level. And while that meeting was on my calendar, and I remember something about it uh, that week and specifically.